All right, moving on, moving on. We have uh, a special guest here. Uh, Super Rare is going. John from Super Rare is going to be presenting on NFTs, and this year, John, welcome to the live stream. Hey, Jonathan, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be it's here. A, it's a privilege. I'm going to go ahead and uh, and step off here, and you can take it away. All right, cool. All right, what's up, everybody? As uh, Jonathan mentioned, John Crane from Super Rare. Super excited to be here. Uh, 2021 was, uh, you know, exciting to say the least for NFTs. And I think, um, or 2020, I think 2021's uh, shaping up to be even better. So, um, yeah, let's 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 go ahead and dive in. Um, so, you know, probably you guys are pretty familiar, or I imagine so. Uh, we had lots of metaverse experiments happen in 2020. Obviously, COVID accelerated a lot of these things. And it was super interesting in art because it kind of forced everyone to take this space seriously. And we've just seen massive engagement. Um, you know, we have virtual galleries in lots of these, in lots of these different spaces, Decentraland, CryptoVoxels, uh, Somnium space. But we're actually seeing kind of folks from the traditional art world like hitting us up saying like, you know, how do you, how do you get a spot in Decentraland? Like, what is this thing? How do I do this? Um, and you know, that's super exciting. Cause I think like when we launched early 2018, you know, that kind of felt like a pipe dream. And so having, you know, top tier galleries from around the world, uh, really starting to dive in and like ask us questions about how to use MetaMask, uh, you know, that makes me super excited. So I think we're just seeing lots of, you know, interest from you know, creatives in lots of different industries. Um, and again, also kind of like massive improvements. You know, we've seen a number of these places upgrade uh, their existing offerings and it's starting to get pretty slick. I think, you know, we're definitely uh, a few years out from a, a seamless metaverse experience, uh, but we're definitely getting people to dip their toes in. Um, so, you know, as far as like 2021 goes, I think, I've already seen a couple of new worlds, uh, you know, floating around crypto Twitter, which is pretty exciting. And also some interesting new uh, standards being built around those as well. So uh, EIP 2615 uh, kind of came out late last year and I've seen some folks starting to build on top of that, which is super cool. So thinking about like, you know, what does it mean to be able to rent out NFTs in the metaverse? Like what would a metaverse or you know, an NFT mortgage look like? Um, you know, this is all really exciting. I think we're starting to see creators use these technologies to really, you know, build a significant income streams. And I think as these economies evolve, that's really what's going to be the forcing function for, uh, you know, the metaverse to actually happen. So super excited about all the developments we're seeing around there. Um, auction houses entering the game. So kind of switching gears. Uh, something we've been talking about for a really long time and I think is very inevitable now is auction houses starting to auction off completely digital uh, NFT art. And so we've seen some of the auction houses uh, do experiments with NFTs. Uh, they have included them in prior, so it's like a physical item and you got an NFT in addition. And I think this is the year we see these auction houses go full digital, right? Like the numbers, uh, the volumes that people are hitting uh, are just too big for people like Christie's and Sotheby's to ignore what's going on. And, you know, instead of trying to hold their ground and say, you know, that this, is, uh, this isn't this is serious, I think they're just diving right in. And so um, I'm very certain that all the major auction houses this year are going to be auctioning off NFTs and, you know, like that's obviously not the goal, right? Like we didn't set out to the goal wasn't to get Christie's to, to start selling pieces of digital art. I think it'll be super great for PR, right? Like these are great headlines. We're going to see the, the coin desks and coin telegraphs of the world picking these up. But really what it's going to do is give a lot of validity and bring attention to the artists and collectors who are already in the space. And so I think that's what I'm most excited about is just, kind of like having these institutions and platforms sort of say, you know, come out and say like, hey, this is serious. We're, we're looking into it and we're like kind of putting a, 
a flag in the ground. So I kind of think about like, you know, banks or something in 2015, uh, ignoring Bitcoin and then kind of like switching course and saying like, hey, no, this is pretty interesting. And, um, you know, I want to have something to do with this. Uh, so this is one I'm really excited about. And, you know, keep an eye out for those headlines. All right. So my next prediction, I'm sure I'm not the only one predicting this because there's quite a few, a lot, quite a few folks who are, have been talking about it, but just the rise of curation DAOs. Uh, this is thing I find super interesting. Uh, you know, collecting in my mind has kind of always been this very social experience, you know, whether it's like collecting to brag to your friends or, you know, trying to build the perfect magic deck or something with a buddy. It's always been super, super engaging and very social. And so I think what we're going to see is going to like, you know, the assembling, the managing and presenting of NFTs and especially digital art uh, is really going to start to mature. And so like a couple examples here, uh, the team at Flamingo DAO is, you know, definitely pioneering. I think they're the first one. They were the first official kind of DAO that I was aware of that said, you know, hey, we're going to go out and start acquiring these assets. You know, like we think they're historically important and this is something we want to get involved in. And so, um, yeah, I think there's just going to be a huge pro proliferation of this. I think we're going to see these different curation DAOs working together as well. I think that's something that's really interesting. Um, you know, there's sort of no friction as far as like you could have a DAO owning a share of another DAO, right? So I think like the, there's sort of like endless chains of collaboration and that's going to be super cool. Another example that I recently ran across was a Blackpool. It's part of the Staker DAO. So people who maybe aren't experts in the space, but want to kind of like get exposure to some of the interesting work that these folks are doing. Um, I think this is going to bring a lot of liquidity into the market, which is sort of, which in my opinion is kind of like good for everybody, right? The more liquidity we have, the more artists we can support, um, the more collecting that's going to be happening. And so I'm super excited to see these early experiments. And also I think they're going to mature a lot uh, this year. All right, next up, I don't know exactly which prediction this is. I think it's number three, uh, maybe number four, uh, but mainstream gaming. So this is, you know, last week I got extremely excited when Tim Sweeney, who is the uh, uh, CEO of, um, oh, what he, he runs Unreal. Um, anyway, so he, uh, he tweeted that you know, he retweeted Jamie Burke's tweet about the open metaverse. And this is something super exciting. I've been listening to Tim's podcast or, you know, the podcast he's on for a while. And he's always been super skeptical of kind of like blockchain solutions, very not into like, Oh, blockchain for the sake of blockchain. But I think he's kind of coming around as far as like acknowledging the actual power that, you know, the blockchain provides, uh, when you're thinking about property rights in the metaverse. And so seeing this retweet was like, I was, you know, an aha moment for me. I was super excited. And I just think, you know, the work he's doing with like Fortnite and just think, you know, like he's probably one of the foremost thought leaders, in this, you know, like just thinking about the metaverse generally. And he's also got the platform, right? Like Epic Games is fucking massive. And so he, and he's got the platform to, really take this to the next level. And so, um, you know, just seeing something like this is super exciting for me. I think, uh, you know, there's a lot that's in the works behind the scenes that we're going to start to see kind of unfolding this year. Again, uh, just like seeing the expansion of the space. I think there's like discord tooling. That's super interesting. Uh, Cooper, who was up before me was touching on some of this, just like thinking about, you know, Discord as a coordination tool and like how that fits into gaming, right? I think they're just kind of like a match made in heaven and these gaming communities are going to be some of the first that actually adopt NFTs and kind of like really take crypto to the next level. And last but not least, hopefully some of you have heard, uh, Axie just did a $1.5 million land sale. Um, this is, you know, again, like the I guess the goal isn't to hit 
these huge numbers, right? It's, you know, like adoption is more important than that. But I do think that these numbers are so big at this point that the mainstream gaming studios are not going to be able to ignore them. And they're going to have to start building strategy around this stuff and figure out how to actually make it part of their games and experiences. So this is something uh, that, yeah, I'm just really excited about. I love seeing all you know, the record breaking numbers. And I think it's really going to accelerate uh, you know, development in the space. People are adopting these new technologies. And so you know, last but not least, I think, uh, as we've all seen earlier today, uh, you know, Lindsay Lohan issued a token on Rarible. This was astounding and amazing. Um, but just, you know, thinking about NFTs as digital artifacts, right? Like people love to collect objects that, you know, celebrities have interacted with, celebrities have, you know, T-shirts, hats, a pen they used, anything like that. And really, if you think about NFTs, they're just a digital artifact. They can kind of be used for whatever you'd like. And so, you know, this is definitely something that we've, you know, has been coming down the pipeline. I think we're seeing celebrities really start to embrace this. And this is a super powerful channel as far as bringing awareness to a mainstream audience. Um, so, you know, regardless as to whether or not you're a personal fan of Lindsay Lohan, I think you should be super excited that she's experimenting with NFTs. Um, and I think this is a trend that's just gonna explode this year. And I can almost guarantee that, uh, you know, every single celebrity out there is gonna, is gonna be on some platform uh, minting NFTs. And so I really think it's just the beginning. 2020 was a big year for NFTs and 2021 is just going to be uh, even bigger. So everybody keep an eye. All right. And that's it. Uh, thank you, Jonathan, for bringing me on. You're I don't welcome. know if we can take questions or anything. I don't know if I, uh, I might've gone a little too fast or the, short on time but uh if we could take questions from the audience or anything yeah definitely oh, what's up uh rare we got rare, rare skrilla next this is what's amazing up? what's up john how you doing Good see you, bro. you too i have some under music to play a little bit here i was gonna hit the air horn for you <clears throat> So yeah, you'll see if there's any questions in the uh, background here. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. It says NFTs still have some doubters, but there's been a huge boom in acceptance recently. Why? From Arthur Man. Arthur Man. I mean, the haters are always going to hate, so that that's not surprising, but I think... I mean, I think it's right. Like the more people who start to understand and just tell you kind of, you just start spreading the word. I think it's like anything like Bitcoin where you're at first, you're like, that's too crazy. That's not going to work. And then you start to dig in. Um, I mean, yeah, there's nothing in here. People aren't, someone's not excited about celebrity NFTs. Uh, but I think they're missing the point, right? It's like, it doesn't matter that uh, Lindsay Lohan's minting the NFTs. What matters is that she's got a huge audience and she's exposing people to this. So. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, will super rare ever accept fiat? That's a good question. Um, I mean, I think we're going to stay as crypto native as possible, but likely build kind of fiat gateways on top. So if you want to, if you want to spend fiat, that's your own MO. Um, but we're going to keep, kind of the decentralized marketplace layer. Somebody named Jack Black's back says he's worried about people buying NFTs that celebrities have interacted with will lead to more and more celebrity worship. Are you, uh, are you at super rare taking care of the celebrity worship problem that we're introducing to the blockchain? I, it, it's not actually something that I had on my to-do list to address 
uh, this week, <laughs> but um, I do also think it's kind of unavoidable that uh, you know people will like celebrity NFTs. Zinc City says he loves what Pac is doing, experimenting. Yeah. Do you have any what about you? on the most recent POC drop that uh, has inflamed the crypto world in one way or the other? Uh, it was quite provocative. So I, I thought that was pretty exciting. What, what'd you think, Srela? Um, POC knows how to get the people talking, that's for sure. He, exactly, he, he's a talented uh, individual. Yeah, he is. My music ran out here. Oh. Crap. And we're back. All right. Um, I, I fire brand zero says what's super rare thinking about the royalties token standards for NFTs? Yeah, I think standard standards are super important. I think that's kind of the, the only way forward. We've actually been doing some work trying to figure out like, what's the, what's the best way to move forward with this. Um, but yeah, I think eventually we're going to have easy to integrate standards and kind of everyone's going to, everyone's going to honor those. What do you think about different solutions for secure printing NFTs by Mike Tango Bravo? What do you think about different solutions for secure printing NFTs? I don't understand that one as much. Do you? I don't totally. Yeah, Mike, can you uh, can you maybe rephrase? Yeah, Mike, let's get a more. Uh, I'm not sure you mean like if somebody else prints your NFT, does their printer blow up in the shop or something? That would <laughs> be a kind of cool work. feature. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Um, Bold, Bold T2 says, why won't the NFT community stand up to all the dollar sign few scammers who were trying to promote this pump and dump? These people are welcomed into so many projects. It's mind boggling. I don't understand that question. I probably should have read that before I started reading that one. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what the, the few scammers are, but um, they should be stopped. The cocktail, somebody wants me to drop the cocktail in the strain. That is, um, that is going to be Gorilla Glue, number four. Oh, nice. Where are you at home? Are you, are you sharing that with the uh, other speakers or what? Of course, virtually I. <laughs> yeah, there it is. I got a question for you. I got no more questions right this second. Is, will there ever be a time where Super Rare accepts Bitcoin as payment? Oh, I'm super excited about that. I mean, at least. In the short term, I think wrapped Bitcoin would be cool, but then also natively supporting it would be, that would be fucking awesome. Cool, cool. I think we're about out of time. Cool. All right. Well, that's, 